I'm Mark Baldwin, and I've played on the PGA Tour, the Corn Ferry Tour, PGA Tour Canada, the European Tour, the Asian Tour, the Korean Tour, the Japan Tour, the Australian Tour. I'm probably leaving some out. Grind is hard work and it's dedication. In the world of professional golf, the difference between the elite and the rest is razor thin. It's definitely a different world, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> the grind is a dream. The grind is why we play this game. It's everyday hustle, getting up in the morning and being hungry. For these players, the grind is a state of mind. It's an attitude. It's the totality of their existence, and these are their stories. You can get to the PJ Tour and still be grinding. The grind never ends. The rewards that are just showered on players are just so enticing. First up, Mark Baldwin a professional for 16 years. As of the filming of this episode, Baldwin has full status and two top 10 finishes on the Corn Ferry Tour, the AAA of professional golf. Mark Baldwin, good to see you, buddy. See you. How are you? I set up an actual mini tour that runs a mini tour for AMS, and the mini tour sponsored Mark, and I ended up caddying for him. That was in 2019, and then from there we've just become really good friends. It's probably a day a year you spend waiting for your bags. Easily, yeah. It I mean, just gets so much worse, too, when you consider that over the course of an entire round of golf, you're only hitting shots for two minutes. <laughs> yes, I know. It's, like... it's shocking to me that a guy like Mark Baldwin is not on tour, but it's not shocking to me because I know how professional golf works. Mark's been a pro for 16 years. He lives with his mother-in-law, or he did till very recently. He has a child. He doesn't really have any money. He has an older car, and he still loves the game, still wants to make it to the PGA Tour, still believes he can. The glamour of pro golf. Some of the biggest challenges these guys face are financial in the beginning. These guys are traveling to money qualifiers for say four spots they missed and they drive to the next town for a mini tour event. The costs are enormous. They have to book their own flight, get their own rental car, get a hotel. At minimum, to do it right, 80,000 a year. Probably more like 100,000 a year. This is nicer than my house. Dude, same. This is Florida living, right mm. here. Literally. Mark had four events at the end of the year that he could skip the pre-qualifier. We first went to Orlando for the Bermuda Monday qualifier. When we got in Sunday morning, the phone rang and it was Sarah, Mark's wife. That doesn't look like just like rank blood. That's blood that's mixed with something. That looks like a murder scene. Mark's infant son, Miles, has an unknown illness. I went into his room in the morning and he was happy. He was just talking to himself. So I was like, oh, everything's good. And then I look at his sheet and there's just a pool of blood. When you get a call that your son woke up in his crib and there's blood all over the sheets, it's terrifying. All right, thank you, Steph. Okay, good luck. This is life on the road. Mark was understandably upset and he's 3,000 miles from home. He's deciding, should he go home? They don't really have any answers of if it's something serious or something minor. So Mark decided to wait and we went out and played the practice round. Testing out the golf course, learning, trying to find some strategy, works as a framework that we can then improvise off of given the conditions will be different tomorrow. That's trouble. Monday qualifier, you generally play a practice round on Sunday, and then Monday morning, play the round. There's about 100 guys in the field, roughly. You have to go super low, four spots, get into the PJ Tour event. Here we go. Hey, babe. Talk to me, what, what went on? It's not at all. She's like, if he had other symptoms, like I would 
tell you to go to the ER, but like his color looks good. Okay, well, I'm um, sorry you had to go through all that and hopefully it is for nothing. That's the best case scenario. Sorry, hon, okay. sorry for the tough morning. It's okay. All right, love you. Okay, love you, okay. bye. Bye-bye. The head nurse at the urgent care center said she didn't think it warranted going to the ER right now and having to wait for hours in the ER. To compartmentalize that stuff is the challenge. Right now, I know she's okay, I know Miles is okay. I need to take these next two hours and get as much out of my game as I possibly can. Golf started as just something that I did with my dad. And my dad had a very relaxed attitude towards golf and he always laughed when he hit a bad shot. That really stuck with me, how you handle yourself when things don't go well. I think because of my background, we didn't grow up with a lot because my dad had substance abuse struggles. My tolerance for challenge and difficulty I'd say it's maybe a little bit higher than a lot of other professional golfers. Despite making three birdies through his first six holes, Mark shoots a one under 71 and misses qualifying by four shots. When you have a start like that, is it more frustrating that you missed? To get off to that fast start and yeah. then kind of let it slip away like that, yeah, it's a, it's a bummer to walk up that final hole, those final holes knowing that you've... Yeah. There's no hope. There's no mathematical chance. There's no hope. But there's a lot to look forward to. Pressure's on at these last few Mondays. The grind doesn't leave time to lick wounds. With Mark's Corn Ferry Tour status running out at the end of the year, he only has two Monday qualifiers left to make his move. We had Corn Ferry status last year, runs to the end of the calendar year. If he gets in and makes a cut, then he doesn't have to pre for the rest of the year, next year too. That's why we're chasing these Mondays. Oh yeah. Welcome to my crib. This is very nice. Oh my God, there's the whole coop out here. Here, chicken, chicken, chicken. Holy look, moly. Look at, look at the giant rooster right there. How do you want to split that? <laughs> <laughs> one egg omelet. Oh my god, I love this place. He, he knows that I ordered one of his friends for dinner tonight. <laughs> How's our little boy? Did you get medicine in him or are you going to wake him up and then put it in? Miles had some health problems for almost a month and it kind of just ran into every Monday qualifier that we had. You make this tough decision every Sunday of whether to leave and go chase the next Monday. Hey, well, I love you. Love you. I'll let the rooster at you. I'll keep the cocks at bay. <laughs> <laughs> I do recognize that we're in a very different place in life now. And my most important priority is to that delightful little human that looks like me. I'm more motivated now to be on the PGA Tour than I can remember. How are you? See ya, how's the family doing? That was good, yeah, yeah. The little guy's a little sick. He's got like a vicious stomach bug and he has hand, foot, and mouth. You know, this kind of hangs over you. There's no way around it. You're not home. You're not there to support your wife and help with childcare. Of all times to be on the road, it's always it seems to happen where your son is sick when you leave. It's just, it's a slog. It's hard to remain motivated. Hi, how's the little guy? Do you have any energy? Well, do the best you can. I love you. There are times when there are so much shit going on around you that looms so large that you can't concentrate on golf, but the requirement, the necessity to use that, the last of that status and just give it the best shot possible was necessary. I don't think we're gonna have that many questions out here. Hit some solid iron shots and make some putts. Be done. That's the name of every Monday, of this Monday game. The distractions proved to be too much for Mark. He shoots a two over 74, eight shots outside of the qualifying number. 
when you have so much stuff going on in your life, it's hard to like be mentally locked in. We were in Orlando and that's when it started when Miles woke up and his mattress was covered in blood. It's been weeks of this now. And I think that's the thing is the compounding stress of wondering, you know, when is this gonna be over? That's the most important thing between now and leaving for the next event is just that he finds, you know, some baseline of normalcy. There was plenty of good shots, good enough that there's something to build on. Just one for the road, huh? A little something to remember me by. Here you go, guys. You're welcome. Hello. Hey, Miles. Hi. Ryan was just dumping my bag upside down to, f to get my head cover, which he lost down there. <laughs> and take a guess, you get one guess. Scorpion. Of, no, no, not a scorpion. Uh -oh. A Hot Wheels car came out of the bottom of the bag. Miles, were you missing a red truck? Daddy Why brought it with him. Oh. Why does daddy have your red truck? What's he, is, he's eating, that's great. Raspberries with avocado toast. I play at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Let's talk before I go to bed. Um, okay. Hey, little buddy. Daddy loves you very much. You say bye-bye? Mwah. Um, mwah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you, little boy. Bye, say bye-bye to the truck. Bye-bye, truck. Bye-bye, truck. Love you guys. Love you, hon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Let's go play golf. Yeah. Bye, have a great life. <laughs> I'm definitely in a better place mentally and Sarah has some help at home. The in-laws have arrived. Miles seems to be getting better. And I spent more time practicing in two days than I did the previous two weeks when Miles was really sick. John Jasinski was his old college coach from Notre Dame. John Jasinski lives in Birmingham and came over to see Mark. John came in the year before, and so we were like his first actual class of recruits. Yeah. I mean, what was your, your national rank was what, 50 maybe? Yeah. I was scrambling to get the highest profile ranked players I could get. I mean, found them on the ranking sheet. My impressions of his golf game were really natural player, probably self-taught quite a bit. I kind of like look at guys' transitions and how they release the club, and I just like the way he did it. He had all the characteristics of wanting to compete. So yeah, that was a, that was a good land. My entire junior career and swing, like as John mentioned, was built around this really strong homemade grip. I just put my hands on there and they just happened to look like that. You know, there was like Azinger. Yeah, you were trying to match up a closed face with a block block move. Yeah, it's as dramatic a swing change as you can make. Yeah, yeah. You did a nice job though. You, you, you figured it out. I wouldn't have been able to play pro golf, I don't think. Without that change. Without that change. And, and if I had made it any later, I would, I'd be working a job right now and mm -hmm. you know, I'd have money in the bank. <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't be living with my in-laws. <laughs> Anything for the game, right? You got your sponsors. It's all for the love, man. Part of the tension in Mark's life is that he's better than a lot of guys on the PGA Tour. He just can't get there. And that's what's so frustrating. Very nice. Nice shot. He's almost too smart to be a tour pro and too talented. I mean, the guy, he's really gifted at a typewriter. He's a podcast technician. He's just like, he's eclectic and he has a lot of interest and a curiosity about the world. That's circa 1982 right there, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't old enough to know that shot. You ain't seen that before. You know, you'd almost rather be Dustin Johnson where you're not smart enough to get in your own way. And he has to question, why am I doing this to myself? I'm in my late 30s, I've got a kid, I've got a wife. And why am I pursuing this silly game when I have so many other talents and abilities, but he's just too good to walk away. I mean, that's the tension. I've caddied a lot of Monday qualifiers here and there, but I had not caddied a bunch in a row. The RSM was the last one, 
and we played a practice round Sunday and Mark wasn't playing well. We got to the range on Monday morning, Mark wasn't hitting it very well on the range. And you hope against hope that from the walk on the range to the tee that things are gonna change. And you know, things didn't change. After a long month on the road, Mark shoots one of his worst scores of the year, a six over 76. He misses qualifying by 12 shots. It would have been nice to shoot a few under. It would have been nice to play a little better, you know, but the net result is that we're on our way back home. It's been a hard month dealing with all the stuff back home and Miles being sick, and it's easy to be illusioned by the lore of pro golf. That wears off quickly when you hit it behind a tree and you're in pine straw and you're two over and you can't afford to make another bogey, otherwise you're missing your fourth cut in a row. That idea of chasing a dream is gone. It feels less like a dream, more like a <laughs> fucking nightmare. <laughs> oh my gosh, you want the TikTok so bad. Hi to the camera, look at the camera. Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Oh, hello, hello. I'm gonna get you. Nom, 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 nom. We flew to Orlando and our families were there with us. Mark had played in the Big Money Classic, and that was the first time that he kind of played without the Miles Health thing hanging over his head. It really wasn't hard that week. We were having a good time. It was kind of like a family vacation. The Big Money Classic is a three-day event that offers a winner's check of $100,000. For Mark, it's boom or bust. Recuperate a year's worth of expenses, or go deeper into the red, because players bet on themselves, it creates desperation. 150 guys and 50 women put in $2,799, and that $100,000 carrot that was hung out there for the winner is just too good for pros to pass up. Welcome to the uh, 2021 Big Money Golf Classic. On the team, Mr. Mark Baldwin. When there's longer term implications for status, and for exemptions down the road, uh, for tour points, all of that stuff. I think there's a lot more pressure, but this was a one-off event. Good one, dude. Thank you. Pro golfers, especially Mark, very rarely say, I'm flushing it. I'm playing it really well. Two practice rounds, Mark was flushing it. I mean, we were feeling really good. All right, grab that pin. Oh, that's fucking sale. That's off the green. Sale. Oh, Come on. I'm well done. The next day he got up and he said he didn't feel great. He decided to withdraw. We went back to the house that we had rented and I had brought along some home COVID tests and he immediately test positive. The guy can't catch a break right now. And it's just for the last three months, it's just been hit after hit. This latest hit hurts more than most. After an opening round of 67, which put him into a tie for second place, Mark tests positive for COVID. Not only is he out of the money, but he's in a two-week quarantine. This was definitely a, a blow to the golf, blow to possibility of making $100,000 the Big Money Classic. This has just become the No Money Classic. But at the end of the day, there's more golf, there's more opportunities, and there's plenty of tournaments, and I just would like to make it through this unscathed. So it looks like it's gonna be a uh, palm tree Christmas. I'm just a tourist taking pictures here. This season on the grind. More with Mark Baldwin. Hey, I just wanna let you know you got a job next week at Pebble Beach. You're yes. in the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Oh yes. Let's go. We also spend some time with Will Kropp. He's been practicing former All-American from Oklahoma. You're not only a touring pro. I can always give junior clinics. I can always give back to the game. And we meet Joe Hooks, who's trying to make it on the APGA Tour. You couldn't have picked a harder profession to get into. And, and you gotta be kind of crazy to be doing this. And many more. Golf is something I just can't get away from, and I'm willing to grind. I'm willing to live in a van. 
It's a long road to qualify. It's long hours. It's up and down and it's all over the place and it's trying to get better each and every day. Being able to ride the emotional roller coaster that is professional golf, remaining patient, remaining persistent, to me that is what the grind is.